tell a little inside story here. I don't remember what city we were in, but uh, somewhere 1990, uh, I guess, uh, I walked down to Alan Woody's hotel room from my hotel room to like borrow toothpaste or something stupid. <laughs> And I had an acoustic guitar with me like I do a lot of times and uh, I walked in and he and Greg Allman were sitting there and they just started working on a song which at the time was going to be called King of the Hill and so I walked in and I was playing and, uh, and Greg said well that's that's what we need right there. I was, I was like, what? I didn't even know they were writing a song. I was like, what are you talking about? He said, we're working on a song. That's what we need. So I went in and we started uh, working on this song that they had started writing some lyrics to but didn't have any music. And so we started adding uh, what lyrics they had had at that time to something that went. And so we started writing and I said, uh, What's the name of it? And uh, he said, uh, I think it's going to be called King of the Hill. And uh, without thinking, I said, oh, isn't there a Roger McGuinn song that just came out on the radio called King of the Hill? And Greg or, or Woody once said, oh, well, fuck that. We're, we're not, uh, we're not going to call it that then. <laughs> God forbid somebody think we stole it. So, uh, so we kept working on it and working on it and working on it and a lot of the lyrics uh, started coming and I was looking at what they had and we were trying to figure out where to go with it. And, um, at some point I said, we started changing the verses and changing the chorus and ended up with uh, the, uh, what later would be called End of the Line. And uh, so... Somehow, King of the Hill turned into End of the Line, and uh, anyway.
Short show, but we got a long one coming up, so we'll see you there.